Hello, Brett Etheridge here, founder of Dominate the GMAT, and I'd like to go through this sample GMAT question with you. It was brought to my attention by one of my students from one of his practice exams, and I think it's useful because it illustrates some important concepts that the GMAT tests around statistics. But before I dive in, I'd like you to go ahead and give it a try yourself. So go ahead, press pause, and see how you do. All right. How'd you do? Well, I won't give you the answer yet, but hopefully you picked up on the fact that it is a statistics question. Now, what in the heck is a standard deviation, right? What does it even mean to figure out how many of these listed amounts are within one and a half standard deviations of the mean? All right, well, there's a couple things going on here. So we have this vending machine, and it's spitting out cups of coffee, a thousand of them, right? And we can represent the distribution of those cups of coffee with what's called a normal distribution. You can think of it as a bell curve if you remember that from high school. And basically here's what a bell curve does. It shows you how the different iterations of whatever, whatever is being tested are distributed around the mean. And the mean is smack dab in the middle. In other words, 50% of the outcomes are going to be less than the mean and 50% of the outcomes are going to be more than the mean. Now it says it's trying to dispense 8 ounces of coffee but unfortunately it's not quite accurate right because the mean the average is 8.1 ounces and so all that means is that 8.1 ounces is the average, it's the mean. So 50% of them are going to be less than 8.1 ounces and 50% are going to be more than 8.1 ounces. Now how much more? That is determined by what we call the standard deviation. A standard deviation is simply a representation of the spread around the mean. In other words, some are going to be some cups of coffee are going to be more than 8.1. How much more? Well, we might not know until we do some calculations, and the good news is you don't have to do the calculations they've already told you. Right? One standard deviation is going to be 0.3 ounces, and what that means is that one standard deviation, we call this a standard deviation, we're just going to draw it with a line, are going to be 0.3, so plus 0.3 ounces more than the average of 8.1. So if you add 0.3 to 8.1, you get 8.4. And likewise, some of the cups of coffee are actually going to be less than 8.1. By how much? By 0.3 less than 8.1 or 7.8 ounces. Now, how many of the cups of coffee are going to be less than 8.1 by one standard deviation? Well, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, technically, it's 34%, right? This is something I teach in the videos and may be useful on really hard questions. In other words, 68% of all of the cups of coffee are going to lie within one standard deviation, either above or below the mean. So the question is not asking you to know that. It's simply recognizing that one standard deviation less is going to be 7.8 ounces, and one standard deviation more than the average is going to be 8.4 ounces. Ah, but that's not what the question is asking. It's asking how many are within one and a half standard deviations. Well, how do we get a half a standard deviation? Well, it's just half of that 0.3, or 0.15, right? So let's add an additional 0.15 onto the 8.4, and that should give us right 1.5 standard deviation, shouldn't it? Because one standard deviation is plus 0.3. An additional plus 1.5 would give us a total of 1.5 standard deviations. So 8.4 plus 1.5. That would be 8.55 on the positive side, right? But on the negative side, we need to go down a f another negative 0.15, right? That'll get us down to negative 1.5 standard deviations. And if you do that subtraction, it's 7.65 ounces. And so all of the cups of coffee between 7.65 and 8.55 lie within that one and a half standard deviations 
on either the positive side or negative side. Does that all make sense? I really hope that makes sense because at this point we have determined the range. The range of one and a half standard deviations, right? One and a half standard deviations to the low side, positive one and a half standard deviations to the plus side, and any of these cups of coffee that fall within that range count. So how many of them are there? Well, now it's just a matter of counting. How many of the 12 listed are within that range? Is 7.51 within that range? No, 7.51 is less than 7.65, which is the low end of our range that we determined, so 7.51 is not. Is 8.22? Yes, it is. 7.86? Yes, it is. 8.36? Yes. Yes. 7.83? Yes. Yes. 8.01? Yes. That's almost the mean. 7.73? Yes. 8.25? Ooh, 8.53 is close, but remember 8.55 is the upper limit, so 8.53 as well. Heck, 11 of the 12 cups of coffee fall within that range. So the answer, therefore, is answer choice. Ooh, where do we go? Answer choice E, 11, well done if you got that. So it's not rocket science, but you do have to understand A, what a mean is, and then B, what a standard deviation represents. It represents the spread around the mean, and it can absolutely be determined with an actual numerical value, and the test makers will likely give you that. You're not going to have to actually calculate standard deviation on the GMAT, but you will have to know what to do with it and how to interpret it and what it means. Now you know how to do that, which puts you in a better position to go out and dominate the GMAT.